Welcome back. I'm Marissa Sarbach, host of AKC TV. We are live at the Orange County Convention Center right here in sunny Orlando, Florida. Our team has been here all week preparing for today. This is the official start of the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canaan. I'm joined with Bill Ellis from the AKC. Bill, we are just hours away from this long-awaited National Championship. What is so special about today? We are. Everything got gets started today. All the breeds are being judged today. Well, half of them. Four groups will go tonight, three tomorrow. Uh, it's a, the largest dog show in North America. We're going to see over 5,000 dogs today and tomorrow. In addition to all that, we have the AKC Agility Invitational, the Obedience Classic, Diving Dogs, Trick Dogs, so Meet the Breed. So much to even remember. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which is great. So, so excited to see so many events. What do you think will be the most exciting part? Well, I, nothing's more exciting than Best in Show tomorrow night, right? But tonight we'll see the National Owner Handled Series Finals Best in Show kick off our live stream at 445. And those are dogs that are shown by their owners. So that'll be a really exciting way to kick off the live stream tonight. So we saw so much happening yesterday as well. What do you think the best part of yesterday was, if you could pick a favorite? Well, I think my favorite, and I think you'd probably agree, was getting to watch the Puppy and Junior stay. I was so, thinking that, but I wanted you to go first. <laughs> was the second annual AKC Royal Canaan National All-Breed Puppy and Junior Stakes. We got to watch all of the groups and then see Best in Stakes, which was really fun. So it was judged by a panel of three judges, Dennis Sprung, Elliot Weiss, and Ed Biven. And, of course, we got to see the beautiful Whippet, Lizzie, yes. go Best in Stakes. They did a great job, all of the dogs. It was so exciting to it see the really puppies. It was really fun. Um, how can people get involved, Bill, if they're either here in Orlando or maybe they're at home and they want to be a part of the action? Is there a way on social media that they can get involved? Well, there's definitely a great way on social media. We're all using the hashtag, this is AKC, so that you and I can see all of your photos. We have loved seeing them so far. They've and of course, great ones. we want to remind everybody to go to AKC TV, watch the live stream tonight, but also see lots and lots of great content that's going to be available on demand. We've got a camera crew all over, capturing lots of exciting footage for everybody. And you're not staying here with me on set. You're going to head out, right? What are you covering today? I'm not. I'm heading out. I'm going to go see what's going on at the Trick Dog Ring, mm -hmm. hopefully get some shots at Junior Showmanship. We'll see where I end up. All right. We'll have so much fun. We'll see you back here soon. See you soon. Thanks, Bill. All right, time now to check in with Anna. Obedience is such a key skill for dogs. They're judged on it here at the convention center this weekend. AKC TV correspondent Anna Lacey checking in on those dogs competing today. Anna? You are watching the beginning of the Obedience Classic happening this weekend. And here to tell us more is Pamela Maniton. She is the Director of Obedience for American Kennel Club. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Okay, so this is a huge event. This is a, hu this is a huge event. It's a big deal. These exhibitors have worked all year long to get here. They had to qualify to come. 253 teams? 243 teams. 43. Yes, yes, from across the country. We have 56 breeds, and they're from 32 states. So tell us and, what... And Canada. I can't forget them. <laughs> Excellent. I've met some Canadians. They are as friendly as their reputation That's says. Right. Um, so tell us about the exercises the dogs are going through. So the dogs at this event are going to... We start at the novice level all the way through masters. So you'll see dogs working on and off leash, retrieving, jumping, using their nose to find something that their handler has last touched in a pile of like items. Is that the scent discrimination? It is the scent discrimination, and that's really amazing to watch because it's only by scent that they find the one that their handler touched. Now, all kinds of breeds are going to be competing. Are there some that are naturally just more prone towards being trained? Well, all dogs are trainable, and we want them to be trained. I think about taking them to the veterinarian. You want a well-behaved dog to stand for exam with your vet, right? But we do have some key breeds that you'll see more of at these events because they're more popular breeds as well. So you'll see a lot of golden retrievers here, border collies, labradors, shelties. But any dog can do this, and, and everybody should do that with their local club so that they can have a well-behaved dog at home, even if they're going to go hiking on a trail. What's the most challenging command for a lot of these dogs? Well, I don't know. I think, I think some of the things that you have to teach them, like the scent discrimination. Okay, so they have to find the particular item, and that just takes time. But they have the natural ability. 
If someone's at home watching and they're thinking, my dog's really good, a good dog, I want to get them involved in competition, do you have to start from a young age? Can you start at any time? What's your advice? Well, it's always easier to start with a younger dog but you can always start an older dog as well. So if you've rescued a dog, because mixed breeds can participate as well. So if you've rescued a dog, then certainly take them, uh, you know, contact one of the AKC local clubs. They have training classes and get started because it'll benefit your whole life. Excellent, yes, obedience is really something real world value. It can save your dog's life in the end. That is right. I mean, if your dog is running out of the house unexpectedly through the front door and it's running towards the street, you want to be able to stop them with a come command and then turn around and come right back. It's going to save their life. Well, thank you so much, Pamela. Looking forward to watching the classic. And of course, if you don't have a ticket yet, you can come on down and watch it live. Thank you so much. Let's go back to the action in the ring. Okay, let's watch. And we are back now. This is Karen Thompson and her dog, Callie, who's competing. Thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for asking us. Where did you guys come in from? We came in from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is approximately 1,800 miles north. And we have worked very hard to get here. And yeah. This is a very special little girl. I love <laughs> Callie. We met just a few moments ago, and she is so lovely. She is so sweet. And you told me she actually wasn't expected to be... Um, a master in obedience that she is. She's in that class. No, she sure wasn't. Um, when when you pick a litter of puppies for competition, um, there's you know all different levels of puppies in any given litter, and what we usually look for is the dog with the most drive, the puppy with the most drive. Callie had the least drive, and the reason she came to me was be I lost both my dogs very unexpectedly, my competition dogs. And, uh, yes, it was very hard, and a, and a breeder um, said to me, you know, I've got this pet puppy, and my husband, Rod, said, you know, maybe she'll just be, you know, our pet. He, she can just be our pet. Well, that was the beginning of a very long road, and, uh, you know, I'm used to training dogs, so I just started training her, and I had um, uh, a training room in, in my house, and I had put all my training supplies up because when you lose a dog that you've worked so hard with to the point where, you can communicate that with that dog in the ring with your eyes. When you lose that dog, it's like losing a part of you. And um, so it was very hard. But I was out putting all my stuff away because I decided I just could not do this anymore because it was so heartbreaking. And little Callie, eight weeks old, one of the uh, article bags, which is for scent discrimination, fell off the top shelf. A metal article fell out, which dogs do not like to pick up metal. Um, and she walked over, picked up the metal article, came and stood in front of me. And I looked up and I said, are you trying to tell me something? And that was the beginning of the road. And she has been just a superstar, just a lovely little girl. Well, I'm so glad to hear that Callie has been so important in your life and really a testament to you and your training and love for her that she didn't seem to have the potential, but she certainly does. She does, and she's a very soft dog. I mean, there's many different ways to train obedience dogs. Um, I have to train her with, uh, I have to be very patient. I have to be very creative. I have to watch her and I have to be very kind. I can never be over the top with her because she, she just absolutely loves to do this and that is why. Well, she is lovely and talented and I wish you lots of luck today right, and through so the much. weekend. Uh, this is such a fun event. Marissa, I'm gonna throw it back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Anna. Looks amazing. So yesterday we introduced you to two amazing dogs, Teddy the Poodle and Cole the Golden Retriever. But these weren't just any guests. They are two of the five winners of this year's ACE Awards. ACE stands for Awards, Awards for Excell Canine Excellence. They're chosen by the AKC Humane Fund. So there are five categories. We have Uniform Service, Service Dog, Therapy Dog, Search and Rescue Dog, and Exemplary Companion Dog. Teddy is the Exemplary Companion Dog who helps his young owner who struggles with autism. Cole is the therapy dog who helped the students of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I was in Parkland, Florida after the school shooting. 
Now today you get to meet another two of these winners. Right now, the Search and Rescue Award winner, very appropriately named Inspector Gadget, and his owner and handler, Bob Wells. But Bob, you did not bring Inspector Gadget today. Instead, you brought his grandson, right? I have Ledoux with me today. Ledoux. So talk to us a little bit about him and why you brought him instead of Inspector Gadget. Well, Inspector ja Gadget has had a very long and uh, successful career. And now that he's older, well, you know, we had to fly from California. So it wouldn't really be fair to an old retired dog. A little bit difficult. To yeah. go on the airplane and whatnot. So Ledoux is his grandson. And Ledoux will be accepting the award, to, uh, award tonight on Inspector Gadget's behalf. Very exciting. And you guys, like you said, came all the way from California. You have put in thousands of hours performing these search and rescue operations, right? Yes. And it, this is a family event for you. I know you said your wife last year was honored for an ACE Award for My the same wife, thing. My wife, Lori, won uh, the ACE Award last year with uh, Little Piglet, her, uh, her dog. So tell us a little bit about, first of all, what, what happens and how, does this, how do you train a search and rescue dog? Uh, it's a slow step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I'm very linear mm -hmm. in how I think. Uh, so, you know, again, you establish a baseline for where you are with your dog, and you add to that baseline. You, in slow increments, you add different elements to what the dog has to uh, recognize and perform to. And so what is it about the bloodhounds that are really great for this operation of search and rescue? They're, they're really stubborn, uh, they're very athletic, uh, and they have a really great nose. Tell me a little bit about the operation in Nevada that was very, you guys played a really crucial part in helping authorities figure out what was going on. Yeah, you know, a lot of people think that we make the nose bump find where the dog actually bumps into the person and that's uh, a success. Um, there are other elements to what we do. We eliminate areas where the person has not been. So the dogs have to not only uh, acknowledge that the scent is there and follow it, but if the scent isn't there, they have to do what's called give a negative. Uh, when we showed up for the particular search you're talking about, the search area was thousands of acres. Uh, and it would have taken hundreds and hundreds of people, days if not weeks, if not months, to find the person we were looking for in that area. Uh, within four hours with a couple trailing dogs, we were able to eliminate uh, most of the forest area and focus the search area down to an area maybe uh, 40, 50 acres. Wow. And at that point, we were able to put my wife's dog, Piglet, in last year's Ace Award winner and uh, actually find the subject we were looking for. So how many dogs did you have working on the case at once? Well, we had three. At that time, uh, it was my wife and I. Uh, she also had a trailing dog she was working along with a human remains detection dog. Mm -hmm. And I was working Inspector Gadget. What was it like for this family to be able to get that closure that you were able to provide? I mean, how was that feeling? Well, it was a military family, and uh, there, there were a lot of people involved. And there was you could tell there was a certain amount of relief in uh, having the answer of where the, the person that we were looking for was. Uh, you know, we can't really give people closure. Looks hey. like Ledoux. <laughs> come on <Yes>. back, buddy. <laughs> hey, come over here. Thank you. <laughs> Can't really give the family closure, but what we can do is give them the answer of where their family member is so they can start working on closure. And how, that's really important to people. How was that for you to be able to do that? <laughs> Don't worry about it. They move around all the time. That's okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> so you want a, some food? No, let's just scratch him on the head for a little <laughs> bit. So, uh, I'm sorry. So how was it for you and your wife to be able to help out with that operation and the many well, that you've done? You know, and, it, and it's the thing is, you go out and you train, you work really hard, and even though it's a sad and tragic day, and it's probably the worst day of somebody's life uh, when we're successful, uh, we temper the, the tragedy of the situation with the, the joy of, of being successful <laughs> in what we're doing. So, uh, you know, even though it's a very sad day for people and we, we join in that sadness sometimes if it's not a, a live find. Uh, but then, you know, a lot of times too, I've, I've found people alive and that's, uh, that's overjoy. I mean, there's, there's no word for handing a, a, a child back to a family. And really, beep, beep, beep. Inspector Gadget beep, beep. and all of the bloodhounds would play such a crucial part in that. You wouldn't be able to do it without them? A, a certified uh, search and rescue dog is worth 40 people in the field. So very quickly, if you deploy animals, specifically dogs into a search effort, uh, you can multiply 
uh, exponentially the success. He definitely knows there's food here. Oh yeah, he's kind of knows that, uh, he knows every he piece does. of food in this arena, believe me. <laughs> he's like, I can search and rescue the food for you. Yeah, he likes, Aww. he loves the Royal Canaan too, Aww. so that's a real treat for him. All right, well thank you so much. How excited are you to get this award tonight I'm, on Inspector I'm, Gadgets? Well, I'm honored and humbled. And you know, and if anything I, I would say is I'm not, uh, I'm not that special. There are hundreds of people right now doing, out searching as we talk. So, you know, I accept it on their behalf. You know, recognize search and rescue is a great thing, and I appreciate it. All right, well, thank you so much, Bob. We appreciate thank it. You. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, well, time to see what is happening over on the convention center here. Bill, are you on the floor? Are you on the ring? Where are you right now? Right now, we're over here at the AKC Trick Dog Ring. AKC Trick Dog, really fun sport. Test the, your dog's skills to entertain. There are five different trick dog titles that you can earn with your dog. They range from AKC novice trick dog to elite titles. Right now, we're enjoying a demo. Dawn Wolf is here. She's an animal talent agent. So she's given the crowd here a really cool look at what it takes to have your dog participate in movies and TV. AKC Trick Dog is a really fun sport to get involved with. Any dog can start. There's a whole list of tricks on akc.org in addition to details about the different titles you can earn, where to get started, a sport that is for everyone, these dogs that are being trained for TV and movies are incredibly talented. <laughs> Dawn's giving the crowd here really cool tips on how to get started with these different tricks, especially the ones that we see on, on screen. We're gonna watch here for a few minutes. Oh, what a good dog. So the dog is going over to fetch the item off of the table there. Looking for it. There we go. What a good dog. Nice. Looks like we're going to work on the same trick again. We're going to send it back over to you, Marissa, in the set. See what's going on. Bill, it looks like you guys are having a lot of fun out there. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Well, you see a lot of dogs here in Orlando doing some pretty amazing things this weekend between obedience skills, agility, and just behavior in the confirmation ring, you name it. Well, you might be watching and thinking, I want my dog to do that, or my dog could never do that. But we know someone who might be able to help. Joining me now is a good friend of ours from the Northeast who frequents our show, Good Dog TV, as dog trainer Kathy Santo. Kathy, it's great to see you here in Orlando. Great to see you. Isn't it so exciting? I know. Everybody's very excited. And who do you have with us that is also very excited to be this here? This is Maria. <laughs> and she's a 14-month-old Pembroke Corgi, and she just finished her championship uh, two days ago, right? Yeah. Now she's, she's an official breed champion. Aw, congratulations, Maria. 
So, Kathy, when you see people here in Orlando or maybe outside of Orlando, people are saying, I see those dogs at the national championship and they are so well behaved. They're so well trained. My dog could never do that. What would you say to them? I would say what I say to all the students who tell me that walking in the door in the school. <laughs> I would say they totally can. There's just a few things that they could do differently than they do right now and they could get an awesomely trained dog. So the first thing would be consistency. Like you've probably heard people call their dog and they say, come here, come on, hurry up, right? The dog has no, <laughs> do you know that? <laughs> the dog has no idea which of those words means come. And so if you're consistent with the command that you're giving, the dog is gonna understand it so much better. So pick a word and stick with it. And you also teach people to train for really every possibility and scenario, especially something like this. This is a brand new environment for a lot of dogs. Exactly, and my background is in competition obedience. So if I'm just training my dog at home in the house, coming to a show with 5,000 dogs, the training isn't gonna <laughs> hold up. So whether you're taking your dog to a soccer practice or out you know, for a barbecue, if you just train your dog in the house with a little treat, it looks good to you, but it's not gonna hold up in the real world. How important is spending time and devoting time to do this training, no matter where you are? See, and that's the funny thing. People think they don't have time to train, but they actually do. So you have to take your dog to go to the bathroom. So if on that potty walk, you picked one thing you were gonna work on, and what is that, like five, 10 minutes? So if you just practice sit that time, it's gonna get so much better. And the more you do that, the more you build a relationship, and then the more you build obedience skills. And I mean, that's something that you have to do anyways. You have to take your dog to go to the bathroom so you have that time. Yep, you're, you're having the time. You're probably not using it wisely, <laughs> but do that and things will get better really quickly. What about failures? Because I know they probably happen. We'll see them here, you know, dogs mess up, humans mess up, mistakes are trial and error. What do you do? You learn from them. Like, I've been in competition obedience my whole life, and if I quit every time a dog failed in the ring, and I've had some spectacular fails, <laughs> as well as some spectacular wins, but I, I get nowhere. So you learn from it, and my biggest thing is I always blame myself. So if my dog didn't do it the way I wanted him to do it, then there's something missing in the training piece. So I go back, I train, I get better, I try again. How immediate would you say the results are gonna be if these dogs follow these steps, or these owners, excuse me? Instantly, instant change. You're gonna put up a sheet on your refrigerator and say, okay, we're gonna call this sit, we're gonna call that down, we're gonna call that come, and everybody who does anything with the dog, whether it's feeding a meal or it's taking them on a potty walk, is going to practice one command each time and you're gonna see the results. Try it now and it'll be better by tonight. <laughs> so maybe people will take your advice here and they'll be doing it here at the National Championship and working on these things. I hope so. Yeah, or maybe even at home. And if they are, we would love to see that. And I'm sure you would on social media as well. Absolutely. That'd be great. And maybe one day they will get to the Invitational. I'll, I'll see them here. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd love that. That would be great. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Kathy. I appreciate it. And thank you, Maria, you were great. <laughs> Well, if you would like to see our other episodes with Kathy and a few of our dog shows on Dog Sport Breeds, Dog Entertainment, you can download our AKC TV app. That's Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. Check it all out. It is all good dog TV, and Kathy has some great tips. Kathy really makes everyone want a dog as well. So fittingly, our next segment is all about just that, a family who wants a dog. Anna? And a dog this family will get, Marissa. I'm here with the Potter family and also Dr. Jerry Klein, our resident vet at AKC. Now, the Potters, as you said, are looking for a, f for a new dog for the family. And we're at the Dog Visor booth, which is a great resource if you're here. They will ask you all the questions you kind of need to, to ask yourself if you're bringing a new dog into the family. This is Dwayne, Emily, Andrew, and James. And we're very excited to, that you're letting us in on this really exciting time. So Dr. Klein's gonna facilitate this discussion. He's gonna ask the questions that someone at the Dog Visor booth would recommend you ask. So take it away, Dr. Klein. Well, first of all, we're thrilled you came to the AKC show because it's a great opportunity. Not that many places in the world have this many breeds and this many dogs available on one site. So the fact that you're taking the opportunity to learn about it, I think it's great, and to go out of the box. Because many people just get a dog because their next door neighbor has one or they think they saw something, but there's so many different choices. Here at AKC, we have 192 different breeds that are rec recognized. And here at the show today, at the Meet the Breeds, there's 160 breeds. There's a lot of choice. So I'm sure a decision to get a dog should not be an easy one. And well, should try to make sure you, it fits your family for the best match. Let me ask you this. Why do you guys want a new dog? We think it'd be a great addition to the family. We already have a dog and he needs a friend. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, so what would you recommend for bringing a second dog into the family? Well, first of all, how old is your first dog? He's four. Does he, does he like other dogs? Yes. Does he, have a, does he seem like he li likes bigger dogs or smaller dogs? Or do you like bigger dogs or smaller dogs? Do you have an idea on that? We, go ahead. We prefer a smaller dog, you know, to go along with the bigger dog. Sure. So, yeah. Well, it's something, usually when I have really small children, I tend to shy away from tiny dogs because they're more fragile and kids can be a little bit rambunctious, especially at a certain age. When they get a little bit older, they can kind of handle it. So you kind of want a middle, small dog breed. Uh, within that, uh, any allergies in the home? No. I just want to point out, Andrew started dancing a little bit here. I know that you're an accomplished dancer. So uh, you need a dog that can dance with you, right? Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Do you know what are you thinking of a breed you might like? Where I can dance really cool and break dance like I can. Okay, so we need a break dancing dog. Okay, we're gonna try to find you one, okay? <laughs> and one that can learn all the steps with you. So if you get one, you can kind of teach them all the kind of things. So we, we try to work with that. So there's no allergies. How about like a uh, hair length? Do you want long hair, short hair, or do you not does that not matter? Short hair, short low, hair. Maintenance. low maintenance. Low maintenance. Yes. There are some breeds that are not like short hair, but they're a little scruffier. They require very little maintenance at all, almost like wash and wear. And so in looking about that, and do you have an apartment or a house? A house with a yard. With a yard. Yes. Okay, That's so great. a lot of room. We have room. Uh, so we have another dog, a family of four, uh, with one dog, so and maybe eventually a family of six. And so we're going to try to find you a breed. I thought of a few breeds that come to mind. The first one that came to mind was not really... Uh, the smallest breed, but I think it's a breed that, you know, is a great family dog and very loyal. It's a boxer, believe it or not. I mean, I don't know if you ever thought about a boxer, but anybody that ever has owned a boxer loves them. They're great with kids. They be, want to be part of the family. And they're not always as big as you think they are. The males can be, some of the females can be very feminine and small. And they're smart and they're adorable and they're really cute as, as babies and they get to be really wonderful family members and they fit in they just want to be with you guys and with your kids and i think it'd be great and i think they're athletic enough that if they want to start dancing with them they could do that too they're, they're smart and intelligent speaking of dancing how much activity level do you guys do in a day do you like long walks we take walks and running around in the yard is a lot of what the kids do with the current dog okay good so we need a dog to keep up on the smaller side, and uh, kind of a, and a breed that I've always loved a lot, and I, and I know the people that have them love them as well, is a breed that not many people are familiar with. And it's called a Border Terrier. And the Terrier group, obviously, but it's not as feisty as some of the other uh, Terriers. And they used to be hunting in packs, so they get along with other dogs and cats, and they obviously get along with kids. They're very easy to take care of, and they're fairly small, only about 15 to 18 pounds. And, and what's your third recommendation? A bigger dog, something like a bull mastiff, which is if you have, keep an open mind here because they might be different than you think. <laughs> well, that's you know what. Before I decided, I knew you wanted a small dog. I picked that one. But here's the thing: we can go look at them and see if it's even something you even like. The good thing about a show today is these are just three. There's going to be 157 other booths that you can walk around at and look at. And you're going to find a dog, like the dog that was in that other ring, an American Hairless Terrier, that you had no idea was even like, like that. And it's smart and it's uh, agile and it's, you know, and it's here, you can see that. And if you hadn't come here, you probably would never have been, you know, been familiar with that. So take the opportunity and the advantage of being here. Well, thank you, Dr. Klein, for all the advice. I'm very excited to go through this with you guys. Next time you see us, we will be, I believe, at the Bull Mastiff booth. We'll see if that's maybe a good fit for the Potters. Um, but I'll send it back to you, Bill. Where are you? Thanks, Anna. Looks like you guys are having a blast over there at the Meet the Breeds. We are over here watching the best junior showmanship competition. It's being judged by Amy Booth. Junior showmanship is a competition for youngsters aged 9 to 18. They're judged on their handling ability, not the quality of the dogs. There were two preliminaries that were judged earlier. Well, actually, there were six preliminaries, I believe. And those two preliminary judges cut it down to six each. So we have a total of 12 here competing in best junior showmanship. So 
So we're watching the 12 finalists right now. We're going to just hang out here for a couple minutes, watch a little of the action. The competitors here at the AKC National Championship have to qualify. They have to have a certain amount of wins in a, a qualifying period and a minimum GPA requirement as well. Hey, Bill, it's Marissa here. I'm watching with you right now. Just wondering how important is it to have the juniors and get them to be a part of this at such a young age? Oh, uh, Marissa, such a good question. It's so important. It gives these kids an opportunity to learn about dogs, compete amongst each other, create great friendships that last a really long time. It's a really special event. They look like they are doing a great job. Are there any specifications for the dogs that these juniors are competing with, or can they have any dog? No, they can have any breed, no limitations, and you really see it all in junior showmanship. I mean, look at this group of 12 here. We have such a diverse group. I guess we have a couple Dobermans, but Pointer all the way down to the Papillon, an Old English Sheepdog. We have a total mix of different breeds competing. And we know that when the judge is judging the dog, she's looking to compare them to their written standard, each breed. What is a judge looking for when we talk about the juniors? So she's um, looking at the ability of each junior that's competing, right? So she's not thinking about those standards. It's a little different. She's looking at how the juniors show their dog. Do they show it in a way that's specific to that breed? She'll really take her time, give each competitor and the opportunity to show off their dog. And these juniors compete all year. They go to dog shows often. They have a real bond with their dogs. They work really hard to get to the AKC National Championship here to finish out their year. All right, thanks so much, Bill. Looks great over there, but we have to take a break right now. Don't go anywhere. We are going to find out soon what dog the Potter family picks, and they look like they had some great choices there. So I feel very personally invested in their decision. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We've got diving dogs, agility, so much ABC more. TV. Available online and on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs, because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. Do humans know they are paying too much with Verizon? No, they just don't know that Sprint's unlimited plan gives you five lines for just $24 per month per line. Wow, that would save us. Nearly $8,000. What about the network? Now Sprint has LTE Advanced. It's up to two times faster than before. No way. Robots don't lie. The man in the mom jeans is correct. Get up to two times faster speeds and see how you can save nearly $1,000 over Verizon and AT&T with Sprint. 
Welcome back to AKC TV live from Orlando, Florida. The countdown to the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canin continues. Starts at 445 tonight. That's going to be right here. AKC.TV and AKC TV only. We will be live streaming the entire event. It's only about four hours away. So do you know what's not four hours away, but instead about four seconds away? Puppies. Let's check in with AKC TV correspondent Anna Lacey, who I hear is making a few new friends, and those friends are quite little. Marissa, I've got my hands full right now and my lap full. I am here at the Puppy Pack. As you can see, it is just one of the most adorable scenes you're going to see here at the National Championship. I'm joined by Aurora Greenberg. She's a marketing manager for American Kennel Club. Tell us about the Puppy Pack. Sure. So the Puppy Pack is a new initiative we're doing through our Instagram channel, American Kennel Club, and we're following the first year story of our puppies' lives. And tell us who we have here. Sure. You have Stryker, a Shih Tzu, representing the toy group on your lap. We really have a thing, me and Stryker. Stryker has fallen asleep in my lap, and I just couldn't be happier about it. And then the two playing are Smidge, the Russell Terrier, and Nymeria, the Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh, and how did you choose these puppies? Yeah, we reached out to Breeders of Merit in our marketplace. And those who had litters ages 4 to 12 weeks of age in November signed on. And what's the purpose of the puppy pack? The purpose of the puppy pack is to educate our millennial audience on the purpose of purebreds and how wonderful it is to own a purebred dog. Now, I certainly am going to become a follower of the puppy pack. I want to see what these dogs are up to. Uh, how can we follow them? Yeah, you can follow on our Instagram handle, American Kennel Club, and then the hashtag is AKC Puppy Pack. Well, these dogs are just pure joy. I am so happy here. I think I'm going to hang out for a little bit. So, uh, Marissa, why don't you take back over in the studio? <laughs> Thank you. Anna, it looks like you have the best assignment of the day. I really am quite jealous right now. I mean, the studio is fun, but look at those puppies. Everybody's going to end up wanting to leave with them. They're so cute, especially the ones. Oh, there we go. He wants to see all the action, too. <laughs> I love this. All right, thanks so much, Anna. All right, so right now we are going to switch right here back into the studio. I have my next guest, Andy Darmarai. Make sure I'm saying that right. Yep. You are the VP of the APPA, which is the American Pet Products Association. Yes. So tell me a little bit about your mission, your role with the APPA. Uh, my role with the American Pet Products Association is basically overseeing uh, what we do in terms of uh, providing benefits and services for our members. And what would you say the role is of the entire organization? Um, we're there to promote responsible pet ownership and also to provide services and benefits for our members to help them improve their business. So what kind of benefits would you say that is? Um, well, on the membership side, we have 1,300 corporate members from all over the world, and we provide them with industry research, with demographic research, uh, programs and benefits that help them uh, do their business better. So you guys really, I'm sure, know everything about what goes on in the pet industry. Yes, we do. <laughs> the biggest piece of demographic research on how much pet owners spend on their pets every year uh, we also do the spending analysis. So in 2018, Americans spent $70 billion on uh, their pets. That's quite the number. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and I can imagine you see these trends of what pet owners are buying. That probably changes yearly. Mm -hmm. What do you see coming up for 2019? What will be the hot item? Um, one of the things that started a couple years ago is um, items that help you connect with your pet or your pet ownership breed. Um, so whether it's matching pajamas for Christmas that you, you've been seeing on the internet. You might see a lot of those this yes. year. <laughs> <laughs> or socks with your dog breed or pocket squares. Um, it's a lot about sort of showing your pride for, for the type of pet that you have. Um, what we've also seen a lot of too is a technology. So, you know, I don't know anybody who has a puppy now who doesn't have some kind of puppy cam so that they can watch their dog or cat when they're not at home. Um, you can talk to, to your pets from, from your cell phone. You can even dispense treats. 
um, that's been a really big area of growth in the industry too. I have to say, I love the whole puppy cam idea. It really yeah. is great, especially <laughs> the whole idea of being able to give a treat to them. Yeah, so you get to when see in, in real time, <laughs> you know, if, if your dog's behaving. My dog basically sleeps all day, so my camera isn't all that exciting. Not that exciting, but still, you still get to see it. <laughs> yeah, and you get to give them a treat when you're not home and they hear your voice, which I think makes me feel better yeah. than, than it does the dog, but it's really cool. It's okay. If it makes you feel better, then it's worth it. <laughs> All right. And so why would you tell us, Andy, that you like working in the pet industry so much? Um, I've been doing it for over 20 years. Um, all of our members basically are, or most of our members are small business owners. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them had a pet and said, oh, I have this need. There's no product that serves this need. So I'm just going to figure it out myself. And they build businesses. It's a very entrepreneurial, very... Uh, independent-minded uh, uh, mind frame that they have. And of course, it's all for, for the betterment of people's lives with their pets. So that's just totally awesome. And you must see new businesses coming all the time. We, on average, get about 200 new companies that join our association every year. Wow. So it's any, anything that you can imagine and a lot of things that you wouldn't imagine that you would need for your dog, cat, fish, or small animal. but there's always new products coming online. Maybe things you don't even need, but you just want. And the oh, holidays are coming up, so you absolutely. know, treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, so one last thing. Could you tell us how the APPA gives back to pets? Um, one of the things that we just started doing is it's Tony LaRusso's Animal Rescue Foundation. We're in the process of donating a million dollars to them to build a facility uh, to train service dogs for, for military veterans. Wow. So not only they're training dogs, but they'll be training more trainers because there's such a great need for, for service animals, for people coming back uh, from the military. So we're gonna be working with them to make sure that we can get more therapy dogs into the system. Um, we also work with a program called Pets in the Classroom where uh, we and some other industry organizations give teachers not only uh, help with creating lesson plans, but also money to bring pets into their classroom and to keep those pets so that kids in elementary school uh, get to know what the, the love of having a pet um, in your life. So it's a lot of small animals, wow. hamsters, bunnies, things like that. And maybe a lot of these kids don't have pets at home, so this is a great opportunity. Right, absolutely. So it's a, a first experience with, with pets for them. And it's also great because we're helping the teachers uh, with the with the financial part of their lesson plans and bringing the pets into the into the classroom, so it's really really nice. Well, that's awesome to hear. Good luck with everything, and thank you so much for joining us, Andy. Thanks, Marissa. All right. Well, right now we'd like to check in and see how the Potter family is doing. I think Anna is over there. You might be at Meet the Breeds. Let's check in. Well, I have to say the Potters were a little skeptical that the Bull Mastiff would be a good fit for their family, but I have to say Andrew and James have taken to Ruby here quite well, as you can see. We're here at the booth with Luann, who can tell us more about the breed. First of all, I want your reaction, Dwayne. You seemed like maybe this wasn't the right fit. I'm just thinking this is a big dog and it must eat a lot. How much does this dog eat? Not as much as you think. If you use a good quality dog food where you don't have to feed a whole lot, um, she eats two cups of dry food in the morning and two cups at night. And I, and I make bone broth in a crock pot with um, neck bones and chicken legs and pull all the bones out and use the meat and the broth and put a spoonful of that over their food. What other questions do you have? How active is she? <laughs> about this about this active <laughs> well that's yeah, really you, know, you don't need a big yard you, all you need is a couch <laughs> they actually do have that and they've uh, both their children really like to dance how would ruby react to that well you know there were some puppies here this morning and ruby's eight and a half years old when the puppies came around she was just up and ready to play so, you know, but they don't expend a whole lot of excess energy. They lay around a lot, but when, the, when it calls for action, they're up and ready. Boys, what do you think here? I like it. I like it too. Okay, <laughs> guys, we're doing pretty well on number one. We can only get one dog today, but we'll see how the day goes. 
Well, Ruby is just very loving here, as you can see. She's actually a therapy dog, right? Yeah, Ruby's a therapy dog in the 12th Judicial Circuit of the court system, and she goes to dependency court every week and makes the children feel safe and secure and able to testify, and she does criminal cases for the Child Protection Center, and she can actually go in the witness box with the children when they have to testify. Wow, so a wonderful fit for children. Absolutely. And and they do have another dog. Are bull mastiffs good at integrating with another dog? You know, if they're raised together or if you introduce them slowly, they should just be fine. What kind of dog do you have? A Staffordshire Terrier. Well, if the Staffordshire Terrier is good with the bull mastiff, the bull mastiff <laughs> will be good with it. Well, there you have it. Okay, we're doing better with the bull mastiff than maybe we initially thought. Next time you see us, we're going to go to the boxer booth and see what the potters think of that. Um, Marissa, I'll send it back to you. <laughs> Anna, it looks like you guys are having a great time there. I'm so excited for the Potter family. Right now, we're going to check in with Bill Ellis. Bill, I believe you're over at Agility. Hey, Marissa. Yeah, I'm over here at Agility. Good job. Super exciting. Agility is a really fast, fun dog sport. You can see there's this pretty elaborate obstacle course at the job work. Uh, their way around. The event here is the AKC Agility Invitational. Bill, it looks like we're having a little bit of an issue with you over at Agility. Our cameras might not be working perfectly well. We'll see if we can check in with you in just a minute. But first, anything can happen at a dog show, and I do really mean anything. Look what we saw when we were covering the ring earlier this week, a different type of ring. They said, I do, at the dog show. Uh, he asked me if I wanted to marry him, and I love surprises, so I wanted to make him a really good surprise. He knew he was getting dressed up, but had no idea it was for his own wedding. I told him we were going to go to a banquet uh, for a special guest and uh, judges. We were going to travel all the way from Europe, so we had to dress up really, really nice to do this. <laughs> I think you started to notice, like, step by step, it was one uh, really nice man, he was walking up and he said, oh, look at the dog, you see, it's the ring barrier. And he was like, what? Okay, what are we going to do here? Why are we all the only one who are dressed up here? So. We met in Florida and we went to a, a blind date to Florida. So this is like wrapping up the bag now when we are getting married in Florida. And why at the dog show? Where else should two dog handlers get hitched? When I found someone, I, I just said, she is the one. Sun is rising over the It's gonna be a wonderful day. Happy honeymoon at the AKC National Champion. Amazing. Oh my gosh, and seeing that dog in the tuxedo was pretty great as well. From the entire team over here at AKC TV, we'd like to wish this new couple nothing but happiness. Congratulations. So joining me on set now to talk about our big event, I have Jason Taylor, Cami Eckert, and David Everson, right, from Royal Canaan, presenting here the AKC National Championship. Tell me, all of you, first of all, thank you so much for coming on set with us. Oh, our pleasure. pleasure. Absolutely. Talk to us about this event. I mean, it's huge. We're so excited to be here. Talk to us about what this means to you and your team. We started partnering with the AKC about three years ago after having had a chance to watch it through the eyes of Yukonuba, and it has absolutely become an iconic event within our organization. We look forward to it all year. We start planning early, and our goal is to make it bigger and better and reach more and more pet owners with it. So it has been a great journey for us. And it really has grown in size this year, right? It has. Without question, I mean, the, the first national champion, which, national championship wasn't even called that. It was called the American Dog Classic. And then 18 years later, here we are with more than 5,000 dogs. A and massive confirmation. convention center and a TV studio right in the middle of everything. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? It's amazing. And yep. also, we have something called Celebrity Team Dog. Could you talk to us about that? Yeah, let me tell you a little about that. Um, we've worked with some celebrities to really bring more consumers engaging in the show. So for example, we've got seven celebrities, one kind of champion and, and rooting for each of the, mm -hmm. the groups. So we have um, Sean Johnson and her team Golden representing the sporting group. And we have Mario Lopez and his Frenchie 
Team Frenchie <laughs> representing the non-sporting group. Um, so we're having a lot of fun with celebrities. We're getting a lot of engagement from uh, breeders particularly. And I have seen those celebrities actually posting about this on social media, which is really cool to see. Can yeah. other people get involved on social media? Is there anything you'd like to see from them? Yeah, so we have a, uh, a contest running right now called uh, RoyalCaninContest.com. Mm -hmm. And through Sunday, breeders can post for their breed for their team. So Team Golden, Team Frenchie, my personal Team Lab. <laughs> and, team Golden. Uh, yeah. Team Afghan. Ah, uh, there we go. Everybody has theirs. <laughs> so they can post, and then whichever breed gets the most posts, they have an opportunity for a national specialty to be held at Royal Canin Ring in a, a $5,000 um, budget to help fund that national specialty. So we're excited. We've had over 18,000 posts. Wow. And we've had 189 of the 192 breeds. And I've been seeing you guys go through them on social media too, so you yes. are looking at those pictures. Absolutely. And there's some yeah. unbelievable yeah. pictures I out know. there. Not only that, they're scrolling live in our booth, and it's really fun to just see all the different dogs, but all the different settings and the way their owners interact with them has been amazing. Yeah. So to talk about a little bit, people can see this when on Animal Planet. Correct. So the broadcast of the national championship is going to air on Animal Planet, January 1st, 6 p.m. Eastern. Then it'll air again at 10 p.m. Eastern. And so if you don't get enough the first time, you can come back, <laughs> pick it up again. With the amount of people that we've been seeing on our live streams, we have a feeling people will be tuning in twice because yeah, right. people right. love dog content and they want to see what's going on at the yeah. show. Right. So talk to me a little bit about, I don't know if you guys want to share. I know you shared your favorite breed, but do you have a favorite moment so far, something you're looking forward to here? Anything maybe that already happened or something you're looking forward to? I think, I mean, we had a monster entry in the Puppy and Junior Stakes yesterday. Mm -hmm. And to see, you know, after nearly 1,500 puppies and juniors in these rings, and for some of them it was absolutely their show career debut. I know. And uh, to end with a whippet, that was just beautiful. With three judges beautiful. in the ring, too, it was such a unique Unique right, I mean, it's, it's a fun format to yeah. the event and the, the iconic judges that were in the ring and for that whip it to win at the, the National Puppy and Junior Stakes, it, it was a lot of fun. Big moment for you? It was. <laughs> I love seeing a lot of the younger handlers, especially the ones that are just coming up that are, maybe this is their first big show. I just think that excitement and the energy that they bring is just amazing. So that is probably one of my favorite is to get to watch them presenting their dogs. And we had Bill live with the junior handlers before today. Yeah. And we said it's so important to see them getting involved at such a young age yeah. to follow through their whole career here. It is. Yeah. I'll tell you, for me, there's something magical about the lights coming up and on the red carpet, you know, which will happen tonight and seeing the dogs come out mm -hmm. and feel the energy from the crowd. I mean, you just get in the moment and it's so exciting. And yeah, you can't help but find a favorite and pick them and follow <laughs> them through. I feel like we're not supposed to say our favorites, but we, we do because you can't <laughs> help it, you know? And it's great. All right, thank you all thank so you. much for joining me. I really appreciate your time and good luck to all of you. Good luck to the dogs competing. Thank we're going to take a short break. Sit, stay, watch. We will be right back with more dogs. This is AKC TV. Home. Home is where family comes together. Home is where you go to relax. Home is where you feel secure. With the AKC line of premium pet products, you can rest assured that your pet feels safe and secure in their home too. AKC, because every home deserves a good dog and every dog deserves a good home. AKC Secure Pet Living Products, available at The Home Depot. The AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canin. North America's largest dog show streams live from Orlando, Florida, only on AKC TV. Does your favorite breed have what it takes to reach the top? Watch live all weekend long. The AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canin. Saturday and Sunday beginning at 445, only on AKC TV. Roxy sure is having fun. Party's over, six legs. She's got some parica now. Some para what? Some parica is what kills ticks and fleas like us. Kills? Kills! Studies show at the end of the month it kills more ticks in less time than Frontline Plus and NextGuard. Guess we should mosey on! 
See you never, Roxy. Use Simparica with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. The most common side effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. Say goodbye to ticks and fleas with monthly Simparica chewables. Welcome back to AKC TV Live. We are moving and shaking today, all excited for the AKC National Championship, kicking off in just a few hours. That's going to start at 445 today and tomorrow. Also, don't forget to tune into our live stream for Agility. That is Sunday at 6, all of this content exclusively on AKC TV. So time now to check on how the Potter family is doing, choosing their new dog this weekend. We know they're going to have a hard time choosing a breed, but, you know, they want to pick one that makes dad and kids happy. So, Anna, what is the latest from over at Meet the Breeds. She's a puppy. We are at the boxer booth, fittingly decorated as a boxing ring. If you're just tuning in, we're with the Potter family. They're looking for a new dog to add to their household. We visited the Bull Mastiff, and now we're on to the boxer. And so far, so good. We're here with Jerry Poller. She can tell us more about Bubbles here. First of all, she's a champion dog. Well, she's almost a champion. She competed yesterday in the puppy stakes, and she was best puppy in breed and group two for the working puppies. She's beautiful and so friendly. What are your guys' first impressions? I wonder how uh, much energy she has. Well, she's a young dog. She's only 17 months. She needs exercise, but she's a wonderful house dog and a wonderful pet. Now, their kids like to dance. How would she respond to that? She'll dance along with it. Oh, can we give it a shot? Sure. I understand you do the floss. Here we go. Let's can you turn see. around? Can you turn around for us? James, turn around. Turn there we around. go, James. You want to dance? You want to join him, Andrew? You want Let's to see dance? how Bubbles reacts to this. OK, come on, guys. Let's James, see. Turn around. Turn around for the camera. All right, I think Bubbles is responding to this. I think she wants to go home with them. What do you think? So obviously she's very good with small kids. But Say that again. I think she wants to go home with us. She's got to go home with me. She's got to go home with me. But maybe your mom and dad can decide to get a boxer for the family. Or we can get that dog. <laughs> What do you think, Andrew? Do you like this boxer breed? Yes. Yes? Okay, well, it looks like Dr. Klein's recommendations are going quite well. Bubbles is a big hit. She likes the dancing here. Do you guys have any other questions? Or should we move on to the next one? We can move on to the next one. This one seems like he'll bounce around, or she'll bounce around the house pretty well with the boys. Our dog, too. Excellent. Okay, well, the boxer is definitely a contender. Next up, we are going to the Border Terrier. Uh, now I'm going to send it over to you, Bill. Where are you? Thanks, Anna. I'm being a little selfish here with our crew, and I made them come to English Setters to watch some of the breed judging. English Setters have a special place in my heart. I had a lot of them. They're fabulous family dogs and really dedicated hunters so right now we're watching some puppies in the ring if we didn't get enough of that puppy and junior stakes yesterday we have three female puppies that are being judged right now later today we will see the best of breed winner from English setters in the sporting group, which is gonna be the last group in tonight's lineup. Tonight will kick off with the National Owner Handle Series Finals Best in Show, and then we'll have non-sporting, hound group, toy group, and the sporting group will be last. So we have the champions that are coming in the ring now to compete for best of breed.
our judge, Plaus Davern, will have a big, beautiful group of English setters to choose from. Hopefully she'll send him around here in a minute and we can get a really good shot of that. Our live streams so far this week have covered the groups in Best in Show, including for the Puppy and Junior Stakes, so it's fun to kind of get out here and show everybody some of the breed judging that happens during the day. All the winners from their breeds that are judged today will compete in the groups later this evening. Same thing will happen tomorrow for the remaining three groups. All right, we're going to check back in with Anna. Anna, what are you up to? Well, now we're at the Border Terrier booth with the Potter family. We've been with them the entire show long, trying to find what would be the best addition to their family. We visited the Bull Mastiff, the Boxer, and now, as I said, the Border Terrier. This is Devlin with his handler, Marg. So what do you think? Do you think he'd be a good fit for a family with active kids? Yes. They have another dog and they've got a lot of space. Yes, but do you have a fenced in yard? Yes. Border Terriers like to play by chasing. They also are very aware of the birds, the critters, the woodchucks, the squirrels, and they like to chase them. And so we want a fenced in yard, particularly when you have children this age, because they don't know to put them on a leash to take them outside for a, no, 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 don't. You don't push on a dog. You say hello like that. See, this That's is good. Right. We've also gone over dog etiquette in other, in other segments. So we hold it's our good. hand out and he kisses you. That's excellent. The kids are learning how to pet him very nicely. Kids are learning how to say hello. Devlin sits. What do you guys think? I like it really good. Yeah. Boarders get along with other dogs, particularly when they're raised with other dogs. But if you look around this booth, you'll see lots of dog border terriers playing with each other. They like to play chase with each other, and they will bark and sound ferocious. And one of them will dive in front of the other one, and the other one will start chasing, and then they change places. And so they play tag back and forth and back and forth. What do you guys think? I think it's a pretty cool looking dog. I got a question for you though. Why is their hair like that? Because this is a breed that was bred to go down the fox holes and chase the fox out of the hole. Okay, very gentle with him. Don't kiss him. Don't hug that. That's right. Don't hug him too tight. Um, and they come out of a hole covered with mud. And they dry off and the mud just comes off. Oh, interesting. So it'll be very low maintenance. You won't have to worry about them staying clean. That's good. <laughs> shed the dirt. They do not shed as much as a Labrador does or a Dalmatian, but this coat, his is fairly thick and heavy. Some borders get longer hair. All these borders out there are more in show coat. He's an old dog, so I don't strip him down as much. Everybody who owns a border can learn how to maintain the coat. Now, I'm guessing that they're highly trainable dogs because in this booth here, they're featuring all of the movies that they are in. So what is it that they are such good showbiz dogs? Because they love food. <laughs> <laughs> and when you train a border, you cannot train it by rote, by 
doing the same thing over and over and over and over. They get and bored by repetition. Stiff. So most people who train boarders train in short segments with lots of food treats. And they love that. They love to have the, the food treat. As you heard earlier, he was barking for the food treat. Well, thank you so much. It looks like the dogs have, I mean, the children have also taken to this dog. We haven't met a dog that your kids don't like yet. It's going to be a um, tough decision. It's going to be a tough decision. Indeed. So you're going to have a little time to think it over. Oh, oh, one more question. Here we go. Does that mean that this dog's going to be digging holes all over my yard? Not necessarily. You often give them a place to dig. When you have a fenced in yard though, you do want to make sure that the fence is very secure to the ground because that's often where the mice and stuff run and they will try to dig out. They will catch mice if they can or chipmunks or whatever. Florida, what do you have? Squirrels. Squirrels. They love to chase squirrels, so again, that's why we want a fenced-in yard. But they are trained, and when we do some of the advanced obedience, agility, earth dog, this dog is running off-leash with another dog, and they are great at it. All right, that was an excellent question. Something to consider, will they dig up your yard? So you've got a little time to mull it over. When we come back, we're going to get a decision from the Potter family. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna take it right here. So it looks like they've seen the bull mastiff, the boxer and the border terrier, but I have to say, I was thinking exactly what Anna was thinking. Those Potter kids really like the dog that was on their level. They're getting down on the ground. They wanted to check him out. So we don't know, but we're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere because we think we might find out which dog the Potter family is choosing right when we come back. Sit, stay, watch AKC TV. This is AKC TV. Do humans know they are paying too much with Verizon? No, they just don't know that Sprint's unlimited plan gives you five lines for just $24 per month per line. Wow, that would save us. Nearly $8,000. What about the network? Now Sprint has LTE Advanced. It's up to two times faster than before. No way. Robots don't lie. The man in the mom jeans is correct. Get up to two times faster speeds and see how you can save nearly $1,000 over Verizon and AT&T with Sprint. Is your pet trying to tell you something? The Pet Comfort Feeding System by WeatherTech. 100% non-toxic and lead-free. Made from U.S. stainless steel and certified by the NSF. Designed to trap spills and messes. Trust the way you feed your pet. Choose the perfect size and color at PetComfort.com. This is a Labrador Retriever. This is a Golden Retriever. They may seem similar, but when you take a closer look, the details tell a different story. These dogs eat, digest, and process energy differently. At Royal Canin, we obsess over these details. So we developed over 200 specific formulas for cats and dogs, because precise nutrition can transform your pet into a magnificent animal. Royal Canin, incredible in every detail. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. We have another very special canine guest on today. This is our fourth ACE Award winner of the year. Now, these awards chosen by the AKC Humane Fund, they celebrate the best, the best of the best dogs in our lives. So, so far we've had Cole, the therapy dog winner, Teddy, the exemplary companion dog winner, and we had Inspector Gadget's grandson, who was the search and rescue dog winner on our show this week. Next up, the winner of the service dog category. We have Samson, a three-year-old golden retriever owned by Joey Ramp. Joey, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you thank for bringing you. Samson on. Thank you, it's, it's an honor to be here. It's very exciting to have you guys here, especially on set with us. Can you tell us how long you've had Samson for? I've had Samson now for almost two and a half years. Um, I got him when he was uh, 18 months old and we went through nine months of specialized training. Um, so we've been working together solidly for almost two years now. And you said before Samson, you did have another service dog. Talk to me about why you had to get a service dog in the first place. I was in a very bad accident, a horse accident in 2006. Um, I ended up with 23 broken bones, including fractured vertebrae and a brain injury. Um, it left nerve damage, so I needed a service dog that could help me with mobility, um, help me upstairs, and balance, brace, and things like that. And as well, I also have post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, 
he helps me with, he could alert me to anxiety or things in the environment that are making me uncomfortable. So does he kind of lighten the mood for you and relax you when he's around you? I mean, even there, he just seems like he's a very relaxing pal to have around. Yes. Um, yeah, he's, he's just a, a gregarious personality, <laughs> one, and um, he makes me laugh a great deal. And when I start to get overwhelmed in my environment or if I start to get in a lot of pain, he helps me focus in on him and I can, I can kind of calm down my nervous system. So he's a, he's a huge help in that regard. And I know that when you had this accident, it really had you reevaluate your academic career. Talk to us about, because I know you're in your PhD program right now, right? Well, I'm working into my PhD working program. I, yeah, I have one more semester and then I'm going into a graduate program in what neuroscience. Made you, what made you start this? Well, uh, when I was diagnosed with, with PTSD, it was, uh, there was really no information out there and brain injury in the, um, together. So I, it, I became hopeless. I mean, I got to the point where I was suicidal because there was no answers. And I decided, well, maybe I could find the answers. So I enrolled in college and then I've been in uh, the neuroscience program now for eight years just trying to find answers and trying to do research and develop some treatments and also provide other people like myself answers that I couldn't find at the time. Because you kind of felt alone and nobody was able to help you, so you took matters in your own hands then. Absolutely, yeah. It was a, it was a very lonely time and it was very isolated. And um, my being, not being a veteran, most of the information out there for people with PTSD is veteran related. And um, my, I was unique, so I, I did uh, think I needed to find some guidance. And in doing, going through my education, I've learned a great deal about what's happening with my brain and how that's working, and that's helped a lot in my recovery too. And your university is the University of Illinois, right? Correct. Yes. So I know you've had some issues taking Samson into the labs. Can you talk yes. to us about that? Well, uh, being in a neuroscience program and a researcher. Uh, Laboratories are a big part of my academics. Um, when I had my first service dog, they were not allowing uh, service dogs in chemistry labs or any labs at all. And we worked through policy changes for about a year. It took almost a year to develop um, personal protective equipment like goggles and boots and things that they could wear to protect them. Going into graduate programs and research laboratories, uh, presents a, a different set of problems and we were barred from entering some very specific labs so that we could move forward. So I mean, we had it, to did change they say that. It was, did they say it was because the dog, it's not safe for the dog or what was their reasoning? Um, well, they, there were lots of different reasons. Some of it was uh, biohazard type issues. Um, some of the experiments that we would be running um, had to do with like, running mice through mazes or things, you know, of that nature, behavioral um, things. And they did, they were afraid of cross-contamination. And they were afraid that the service dog would um, alter the experiment just by them being there because they were a predator. So we offered to run a research study. We, we got funding and um, we were still barred from doing that. So we are currently now moving forward with some, some different avenues. But this is, I mean, it's still making progress right now, what you're doing towards getting service dogs into these labs so people like yourself aren't barred from this type of experience and this academic learning. Absolutely, yes. I've reached out to, um, there are several people who uh, work in biosecurity and compliance in um, laboratories in, internationally, and they reached out to me, and they want to help us in possibly developing new guidelines, new regulations and policies, as well as finding uh, a laboratory where we can run our experiment. And um, that will provide the data that policies can be made off of. So do you hope that this is really going to impact a lot of other universities and labs across the country? Absolutely, yes, because when, um, when our story went national, uh, emails, messages, he has a Facebook page. I just was inundated with other students across the nation running into the same problem. And I didn't realize at the time what a big issue it was. And I'm hoping that we can um, provide equal access for everyone in science. People with disabilities are underrepresented in science uh, 
it, it's, a, it's a huge population of people who are under, underrepresented in science. And so we'd like to try and develop policies to provide them access to that. I imagine it must have been kind of a relief to see all of these messages come in on social media because you thought you were the only one dealing with this and it turns out so many other people are facing the same kind of situation. Exactly, and I felt alone in, the, in that fight and as they all did too. And um, so we've all come together as a community. I just recently we developed a nonprofit organization um, called International Alliance for Ability in Science and we're hoping to make some templates and guidelines for um, researchers and faculty members so they can provide accommodations and as well uh, provide scholarships and mentorships for people with disabilities and people with service dogs going into science. A lot of exciting stuff to look forward to. Yes. Joey, last thing, how excited are you to receive this award tonight with Samson? I mean, it must be quite an honor. Oh, it is. It's, a, it's an amazing honor. Um, I think of, of Samson as kind of an ambassador for, for service dogs, so people can see what an impact that they have on people's lives. And also, um, you know, just to see that what you can make happen, you can make your dreams um, happen. He, he gives me the independence to be successful. And he is such a sweetheart. Thank you. Thank he you is. so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Good luck and congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, time now to check out where Bill Ellis is. Bill, are you at a ring? Where are you? Thanks, Marissa. Still being selfish over here, keeping our crew at English Setters, watching the breed judging. We're actually getting toward the end here. Our Judge Plow Tavern is just having a look at the last dog in line, and you can see the champions starting to line up and have their handler set them back up so that she can have another look and start to make a decision. We're going to take a moment and just enjoy these beautiful dogs. So Bill, I see the judge walking around there. It's Marissa here again. What is she looking for? Well, Marissa, she's been over all these dogs. She's had a look. Just similar to what we see in the group judging in the evening, right? So she's had her hands on all of them, watch them move. She's gonna look at them again. And now she looks like she's gonna pull out just a couple favorites. She'll probably have another look at them. And there we see everybody trying to realign their dogs and make sure they look just perfect for the judge to get a view. So she'll probably just work with these five dogs that she's pulled out again and make her decision from them. Bill, do we know if she'll have them go around the ring one more time or what she thinks she might be doing? Yeah, I think she'll probably have them go around the ring again. She has to choose a few different awards to give. We'll have to wait and see what she does here with them. So it looks like she's gonna move them again. Yeah, so just like we've seen the last few days in the group competition, she's just having these guys go one at a time around. And is this just a nice refresher for she her? She can look at each. 
Sorry, go ahead, Marissa. I just was asking, Bill, is this a nice refresher for her to just see, get a refresh on those dogs and what she's already seen? Exactly. Gives her a chance to just have another look and then decide who the winner will be. So that's a familiar face to you and I, Marissa. The, looks like the breed winner is going to be Joanna, who we've seen the last few days in the sporting group. And we will likely see her again this evening in the sporting group tonight. Yeah, it's great, Bill. What we've been saying is it's nice to see a lot of the same dogs coming back for a new day. And of course, today is the big exciting day at 445. So hopefully we will see more of those dogs that we're seeing in the ring right now joining us. Any Anybody else joining us for the 445? Because that's the big event and we're very excited. All right, thanks so much, Bill. Time now to check in with Anna and the Potters. And this is the big moment that we have all been waiting for because I'm told that the Potters have now made a decision. Anna? All right, this is the moment we've been waiting for. This is decision time for the Potter family. We've been with them through the whole show, deciding which type of puppy they should bring home to join their family. We visited the Bull Mastiff, the Boxer, and the Border Terrier, per Dr. Klein's suggestions here. It was tough. I got uh, votes from the kids to bring home all three, but finally they have made a decision. Dr. Klein? Well, first of all, did you have fun? It was great, right? We had a good time, yes. And did you pick one for, to bring into your family? What's the decision on this? Well, actually, we're going to reveal the decision with the breed that the Potters chose. <gasps> well, look who it is. It's a bull, bull mastiff. bull mastiff one out. Well, and there that, you go. That's a surprise because initially you guys thought that was way too big, right? Yeah, when he first said bull mastiff, when you first recommended it, I was thinking, gosh, that dog's going to cost so much to eat, you know? <laughs> and then once we met him, I just realized how gentle they were and how good with the kids. So I we just was... They, drew me to him. I couldn't help it. I think that's really important that sometimes you have your mind set up, but sometimes it's nice to meet the possibilities and you can change your mind. You never know who you're going to fall in love with, you know, sometimes. And what's great about this is you're, you went out of the box a little bit. And, you know, hopefully this will be an incredible addition to your family. That's what you want. A good match. Well, thank you guys so much for letting us go through this journey with you. Your kids had a great time. They were so much fun. And I just want to reiterate the Dog Visor is a great resource if you're coming to the show and you want to get some advice on which dog to bring home. And the Bull Mastiff, wow, what a star. Thank you all so much. We're going to send it back to you, Marissa and Bill. And hey, wait, before we do that, kids, can I get a cheer for the new dog? <laughs> All right, we got a clap. We got a golf clap. <laughs> All oh right, my gosh, I love it. <laughs> For the bull That's master. awesome. They look like they had so much fun in this, Bill. I mean, it's just exciting to see them finally pick a dog. I know we've been really with them every step of the way, so it feels like we're personally invested here. Totally. And what's it. a better way to spend your day than visiting dogs, right? Know, and we have so many here to choose from. So if you're in Orlando, walk around, look at Meet the Breeds. Who so knows? Many. Maybe somebody on here is looking for a new dog, too, and the Potter family helped them. Yeah, That'd definitely come out. Visit all those breeds. Find the one that's right for you. Exactly. And so, Bill, you thank you for running back to set here. We know <laughs> you were just out doing some live hits from the rings. What did you see out there today to do a recap? So much action, right? So we visited Agility. We checked in at Junior Showmanship. We saw some breed judging with the beautiful English setters. My Your personal favorite. Personal you breed. mentioned that a couple times. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that I was, you know, just complete I think Teague clarity in the lab that I was might being, not be happy that you said that. Well, you know, it's just <laughs> being selfish and enjoying those beautiful dogs. They really are beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so Bill, what do we have coming up for everybody? I know tonight's the big night. Tonight's the big night. Live streaming starts at 4.45 p.m. here on AKC TV. We're going to kick it off with the AKC National Owner Handled Series Finals Best in Show. Those groups also, if you want to watch any of those individual group judges, um, they're available on demand on AKC TV. After that, we're going to see four group 
to judge tonight. We'll see the other three groups tomorrow and best in show tomorrow. So much going on here in Orlando. Like we've been saying, the crowd keeps growing. The amount of dogs keep growing. So I mean, much energy it's, it's, in this it's building. It's so exciting. Yeah. I know people are just flying in this morning from all over the country. So it's exciting to have everybody with us. Bill, one last thing that we want to talk about is our social media push that we've been asking everybody That's to right. do to get involved in. You That's see right. it right there on your screen. What is this, Bill? So this is hashtag this is AKC. This is how Marissa and I and the whole AKC TV team and the AKC team can see all the photos that you post. Anytime you post a photo of your dog, whether you're here in Orlando or anywhere in the world, make sure you use the hashtag. You see it on your screen. Mm -hmm. This is AKC. And don't stop after the dog show's over yes. tomorrow. We want you to keep using it so that we can keep enjoying them. Bill, there it is, us right in the middle on set yesterday. So excited to see these pictures. Uh, that one, we had the AKC take that, and we're so excited. We love seeing all of these. Look at that dog in the Santa hat. That's, that's a cute one. <laughs> so exciting to see all of these photos. So if you're posting and you would like to see your photo on our screen, make sure you share that with us. Use that hashtag, this is AKC. That's going to do it for us today. Have a great day. See you guys later. I'm Marissa Sarbach. This is Bill Ellis. Have a great night. We'll see you at 445.